go back. Yasos, Kalispera, Kalimera, Elada, wherever you're watching this from. Cheers to you. Maybe I drink too much. Maybe I smoke too little. It is what it is, right? So, welcome to episode five. Uh, episode five, we're gonna continue a little bit on the wild nights because it seems like people are really loving those wild nights. And then I'm gonna go talk about, I don't know, criminal past, whatever, like stuff that I just did dumb stuff that I did when I was young. So that's what we're gonna talk about. Cause I'm kind of like, I'm, I'm getting really weary of telling stories about stuff that I did when I was in Greece. Cause it might be implicating people. And I don't wanna put people in uncomfortable situations. So I'm pretty much just gonna focus on stuff that I did when I was younger, dumb things. I'm sure many of you have maybe tried the same things. And then, you know, uh, maybe you find it interesting. Maybe you don't, I don't know. Maybe, maybe not, move on, right? So I'm just, like I said, I hate the small talk. First of all, uh, thanks for tuning in. I hope you subscribe. You know, I hope you like the, the video that uh, was just posted for the Skrilla remix. Uh, you know, the guy who remixed the GK Light Radio something, Radio Light Room something. I forgot the name. I forgot the, the stage name, but yo, love the remix, man. When he sent it to me, I was excited. I didn't want to tell him I was excited, but I was really excited about it. And now that it's out, I'm, I'm really happy about it. I think it's great. And of course the video also, like <laughs> whoever doesn't know the guy that, that edited the video, that's the guy that made the thumb picture of me. Let me see that thumb. Back long time ago. That's a whole other story. We'll get into all that in another episode. But this episode is about continuing the wild nights. And then we'll move on from that. First of all, cheers to y'all. It's Friday night here in Germany. Corona lockdown. I'm trying to make this even though I'm here in, you know, lockdown situation as professional looking as I can. So I hope you like it and I hope it works out. So let's go back to it. So we're continuing the wild nights, right? Like I always do with it, whatever story that I tell, I like to like go back, like tell background story, right? So here's the thing. You see this? I drink a lot. That's what I do, right? Uh, it didn't start from nowhere, obviously, right? Uh, I have an older brother. First, here's another thing I, I think is, uh, is necessary to say. Uh, just a quick disclaimer. Uh, last episode, I talked about getting quote unquote raped by a big girl. And uh, here's the thing. It's a true story. It happened. But I think it's also necessary. And I got a message from my brother who told me about this. And I think it's true. I shouldn't be going around making light situation of something like that because there are people who are traumatized by such a thing. Me personally, I wasn't because misty whatever you want to call it it's just i wasn't traumatized by it it's something that i i'd forgotten about i remembered in, i remember to tell stories about it because i think it's funny but obviously there are people in both uh, sides are the men who have been who have been treated like that by women or women who have been treated like that by men and obviously it's a very tra uh, traumatic thing we're now in 2020 when people things that happened in the past come back to haunt you in the future and i just don't want anybody to feel like i'm making light of that or that it doesn't matter to me for me it wasn't a traumatic situation it's, some, it's a story that i, I told uh, without any any back thought about what implications might have for other people but at the same time i don't want to try and make anybody feel a certain way about it it was just a story that i was telling to people that i i know are kind of interested in hearing that type of story so that's that's one the second thing is please understand the coffee shop talk thing it's not intended for kids so if you're young probably shouldn't be watching this <laughs> if you're if you have young kids around you probably should be letting them watch this just letting you know right now okay so those are the two disclaimers i'm going so small talk i hate it we're gonna go right back I'm just gonna jump right back into the whole uh wild nights thing right so i'm gonna go back even further me uh when i first really started drinking it wasn't necessarily like uh like I started really early, I guess, in Canada or where the city I'm from is Edmonton. I'm going to talk a lot about Edmonton today. There's a couple of interesting stories. So when I was young, I remember I got invited to the under 16 national team uh, training camp in Toronto. So I'm by myself in Toronto and Toronto, the legal drinking age is 19, right? So I'm, I remember uh, my brother's girlfriend at the time picked me up and took me out to go have a dinner or whatever. And I was really bored. I was, I was in a hotel the last night by myself because everybody else had gone. Most people were from Toronto or from Quebec that were on the team. I was the only one I think that was from, from Edmonton in that area. So I was staying in a small hotel by myself 
this is actually really messed up so i was staying in a small hotel by myself and i was really bored and i was like i really just want to get out and do something right and i realized while i was staying in like a industrial area really close to the airport at in toronto and i was like i really need to get out but i'm 16 i can't do anything so what am i going to do i looked or i asked around i don't remember how i found the information because this is back before the internet but somehow i found out that the, oh no i went downtown toronto and i saw a place that said fake ids so there's a place you can get fake id that said that you were older than you were so i go into this place i'm like yeah i want to get a fake id let me into this place yeah goes, okay where do you want to say you're from because like they give you ids that say that you're from a certain city or anywhere in in the world in the states that you're from and you can say okay you're from this place so me i say that i'm from detroit because i was a hockey fan and i remember i had a detroit red wings hockey jersey so i just figured you know what if i ever go somewhere and i'm wearing this detroit red wings hockey jersey and i have a piece of id that says i'm from detroit people will believe that i'm from detroit i'm from detroit right so i asked this guy to say i'm from detroit so he took the picture of me gives me this laminated uh id so okay cool you can say that you're from your i think it was 22 years old and you're from detroit i was 16 right so i go back to the hotel i'm staying out my uh staying at my brother's girlfriend at the time she picks me up takes me to dinner all cool I act like the nicest young 16 year old boy in the world and then she drops me off and then in my head i want to go to the strip club so i want to go to some titties testing it out go show the guy my id i'm close to the airport so he just assumes okay this guy must be traveling for work whatever lets me in and i'm like wow i have the holy grail 16 year old with a fake id i can if i can get into a club in toronto i can go anywhere that was my impression right so i go back home to edmonton and uh and the thing is i used to play uh soccer like in a what is now considered beer league team so back then i was playing with men that are in the beer league team the guys that are you know they're working all day they come just to play drink a little bit and that was like the first impression i had of like senior football it wasn't a professional environment it was this it was just guys that were just playing for fun they drink in their spare time and then after that you know they they, they play football so i was hanging out with them and uh I tried one time by myself to use this ID that I got in Toronto saying I'm from uh, Detroit or Michigan it was to say that I to try and get into a club so I remember and I'll never forget this I went to a club by myself to meet somebody there and I tried to use my ID so when I went to use my ID like I said I planned it all out I wore the Detroit Red Wings jersey and everything so I went there showed they got my ID but when I showed them my ID, there was a, I'm from the province of Alberta in Edmonton. There was an Alberta healthcare card that I had just over it, just behind it. So the balancer, I, I was so dumb. I showed him the ID in my wallet. So when I showed him in my wallet, he saw the ID and he was looking at it. He was wondering if it's really me or not. And then he saw the Alberta healthcare thing. And then he just said to himself, no, that's not you. So obviously he took out the Alberta healthcare uh, healthcare card saw that it wasn't me saw a completely different name saw a completely different uh date of birth and he just laughed at me and said get out of here so the fact that he laughed at me and told me to leave really put this like burning desire in my heart to just somehow get into this club right so this place is about 20 minute taxi drive away from where out from from where from where we live right so i took the i think it was a taxi was it a taxi or i drove home I'm pretty sure i drove home or i took the taxi or somebody drove me off. i don't even remember but i went home and then i went and stole my brother's id so I stole my brother's ID, who was born, uh, I'm not going to say his birthday, but I knew his birthday. I memorized the, the entire taxi ride back there. And I was like, fuck this guy. I'm going to get in there, right? So I took, changed all my clothes, everything, put, out, put on all different types of clothing, whatever, put on a hat, just changed my entire look, whatever, went into this place with my brother's ID, showed him only the ID and nothing else. And lo and behold, the exact same bouncer let me in the club like it was nothing. Now, mind you, remember this for the later in the story, right? The club that I went to on this day is very relevant to a story later on in the show, later on in this episode, right? So that was that was a really wild time that I remember. And another thing is we had this thing where uh, like I used to go play with one of my older brothers, my middle older brother, and I used to play on his soccer team. So on the team that they were, I just told you about the beer league team. So when I played, when I played there, they had this thing where they like to rookie players. It's like initiations that they do to players that are new to the team, right? My whole thing was, I didn't want to be one of the guys that was being treated like that. Cause the thing that they do is, what they love to do is, they literally take a guy, lay him down and there's all a bunch of old, you know, older guys, not old guys, they're in mid twenties, whatever, they're all working class guys, but they will sit on your face with their bare ass. And my whole thing was, guys, let's find another solution i don't want you to sit on my face with your bare ass i don't want that i never it, i just i was i wasn't scared of it it's just something i really wanted to avoid let's put it that way right 
So there was three of us that were on the team that were new to the team. It's me. I'm not like I'm, I'm trying hard not to mention names, but I think in this episode, there's going to be a lot of names that I mentioned just for the purpose of the fact that it makes the story, the story more interesting. You'll, you'll understand why, right? So it's me, Sean and Kirk were on the team. People that are from Edmonton that know, they're going to know the story. They're going to know whatever, right? So the three of us are about to get uh, like initiated, right? So they're because my brother's on the team they're kind of taking it easy on me right but these other two guys they're always talking shit they're always like in instigating all the guys oh you never catch us da, 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 whatever because they're really fast and the other guys were all kind of slower so they're like you never catch us you never catch us and they had a chase they're chasing them around we were in in Kelowna in Kelowna BC for a tournament and they're chasing them around they're chasing them around they can't catch them these two guys are way too fast for everybody else and they can't catch them and at the end of the day at the end of the chase these guys go and hide in their room and they just figure, okay, we're in our hotel room. You're not going to do anything to us. Uh -uh. These guys literally broke the door down. Boom. Took it down off his hinges. Went in there, grabbed them, and sat on their face, man. The guy took off his, his pants, sat on his face, wiggled his ass a little bit in there. And this guy's just stuck there just with the ass in his face. Both of them got it. And then after that, they were initiated. Okay, they were cool. And then afterwards, the, kind of some of the guys were handyman, handy workers, so they put the door back together. It was a motel or whatever, so nobody really understood, nobody really cared, I guess, from the motel. And that was that, right? Me, what they decided they were gonna do was they're gonna get me drunk. So they're like, yeah, okay, fine, you know. And it wasn't at that, it wasn't in Kelowna. They're, they, they're like, okay, we'll try to figure out what we're gonna do with you. We ended up going to a city called Calgary to go like uh, on a trip. So like, okay, you know what? Here's what we're gonna do. You we never, re we never initiated you in Kelowna. We're gonna get you drunk today as your initiation. I'm like, all right, cool. And this is where I learned that trick that I told you about last episode. So these guys are all buying me shots. So the shots are small, and I'm thinking to myself, okay, I don't want to have the burn, so I'm just gonna like chug it, so I go straight down and see if I, I can live with it, right? So that's why I learned that trick. Slam it down, make sure it doesn't get stuck in your mouth, go straight down, and then I'm like, okay, it's not that bad, right? And these guys are like, okay, they're, they're kind of impressed the fact that I can take it and not complain. So they're like, all right, cool, have another one. So understand, these are working class guys. They're not guys that are making like you know, hundreds of thousands of, of dollars, where they're not professional football players, working class guys. So they don't have a lot of money. So before you knew it, I was a little bit drunk, but they were out of money. So they just came to the conclusion, this guy drinks way more than we can afford, they gave up. And that was like a crowning achievement for me. I can drink more than you can afford, and that's my initiation. I, I'm a pretty good drinker. That's what I assume, right? So that's initiation out of the pocket. Uh, here's the thing though. So like I said, I never really used to go out that often, but when I did go home, that's when I would go out and I'd be free, you know, hang out with my friends, do whatever, right? So this one particular time, I'm back home and I have uh, one of my best friends, name is Ben it's relevant to anybody who doesn't know him so one of my best friends he has these two older brothers now imagine back then I'm thinking I'm I might have been 19 20 like this is all between the ages of like 19 to 23 these stories and some of them are the, even a little before that but at that point I'm around that age right and I'm back home uh, you know I was living I think in, in Zarbrook and in Germany or whatever I don't I don't even remember it's not, it doesn't even matter right so I'm back home I'm with my best friend we go to this one club I think it was called Rum Jungle. No, not Rum Jungle. Or what? It doesn't even matter. So we're at a club, right? End of the night. And this is like when you're just trying to like meet girls randomly, you know, trying to go out, see if you can talk to them or whatever, right? So I'm there and his two brothers are there. And here's the thing about his two brothers. There's like these huge, and I'm talking huge, big, just muscular, good looking bulk guys that women just love. I'm like the tiny, skinny guy. My friend is tall like his brothers, but he's not built like his brothers. And his brothers are just like, they're just banging. Like this is huge guy. Women love them. Everywhere they go, women were just like slobbering over them, right? So I'm there with these two guys. I'm thinking to myself, I have no chance if any woman approaches us as a group and looks at the four of us and says, hey, who am I interested in? I'm thinking I'm the last one. I'm the shortest. I'm not, you know, I'm just, I, I think I got no chance, right? So there's this girl on the dance floor and she's by herself and she looks in our direction. So one of my boys, older brothers is there. The other one's on this side and he's, he's next to me, right? And I could kind of tell all of them are looking in that direction because it's a dance floor and there aren't that many people that are just by themselves and she was a good looking girl and she's there on the dance floor by herself right so uh yeah anyway so so she's there and then you know she's looking at our direction and i kind of like see if i can make eye contact with her and i made eye contact i'm like okay well maybe i have a chance so i kind of like i kind of like point to myself like well you looking at me or you looking at them and she acknowledges she's looking at me i'm like wow right 
So I'm out there, right? I'm on the dance floor. I'm trying to talk the talk, whatever I can say. I'm just excited. This girl's actually interested in me. I'm like, yeah, let's, you know, let's meet a little bit later. She's like, no, I can't. I'm here with my friend. I'm like, okay, once you want, give me your number, and then maybe I'll come see you. You know, I'll come, I'll come, come over to your place afterwards, and then we we can talk. She goes, like, you know what? Fine. She gives me her number. She's like, all right, give me, send me a message later, and then we'll see if we can talk, right? Rick, Ricky's. <laughs> so, uh, here's another background story to this story, right? In school, I was when I was in high school, we used to play this game. This game is called uh, birthday beats, right? So whenever somebody had a birthday, what you do is you'll all gang up as a group of people. You will all go to that person and you'll hit on them, beat them, however many times their age is, right? So if like you're you just turned 16, everybody will grab you and everybody will hit you 16 times so that you've taken it from everybody and then you're done. There's one particular guy in our school, for example, we all tried, I think there was like six of us, seven of us. And Kay, if you're watching this, your, boy, your, your brother Bernard who was in this, right? So we all tried to grab this one guy, hold him down and give him his birthday beats. I think at that point he just turned 18. All six of us, six, like we're not, I might've been small, but the rest of us were, rest of the guys were like normal sized guys. We couldn't hold him down. That's how strong he was. This is a big boy, right? So he basically just like shoved us all off of him and was basically like, who wants this smoke? And we were all like, you know what? We don't want this smoke. Mad never got no birthday beats, right? So let's fast forward back now to this evening. I met this girl, right? Right. So I'm talking to this girl. This is okay. I'll send you a message. I'll come meet you later. So I send her a message. I remember my boy, he's driving around. He's like, I'm so excited. Yo, I'm going to go see this girl. See maybe what happens, whatever, whatever. Right, right. So he's like, all right, cool. And I'll, I'll drop you off over there. Cool. So I send her a message. She's like, okay, yeah, if you want, you can come over. I'm home. I'm like, all right, bet. She lives downtown. Anybody that's, from, anybody that's watching or listening from Edmonton, downtown. This, this, this story is a little bit too descriptive, but okay. Nobody really knows who I'm talking about, especially uh, the Greek audience. So it is what it is, right? So my boy drops me off downtown, right? So I'm like, all right, cool. You know what? Bet I'm probably just gonna take the bus home or whatever. It's a long way from there, but I'm gonna, I'll get home. He's all right, you can go home. He's not gonna wait for me. It is what it is, right? So my boy leaves and it's winter time in Edmonton. Please understand, winter time in Edmonton, we're talking minus 10, minus 15, minus 20. And at nighttime with the wind chill factor, it can get up to minus 30 over there. So it is cold. Like it's the type of cold you go outside and the wind just slaps you. It's cold, right? So I go into this girl's place, nice little place. Okay, whatever. We start talking. Yeah, okay, we're talking, like really talking. And it's, you know, it's a nice conversation. Okay, cool, whatever. And then we you know, start to get to the point where well, maybe we can talk, talk, right? So this shit is a nice little couch. So we figured, okay, maybe we can talk, talk on the couch. I swear to you, just at the point where I thought, okay, we're really gonna get to talk. And I hear this. Yo, let me in, let me in. And I'm like, who's that? She automatically jumps up. What are you doing here again? She's like yelling his name out and I recognize his name. She's like, what are you doing here? You always do this. And I'm like, what's happening over here? And so she comes back to me and she's like, don't worry. It's okay. I'll take care of it. I'm like, take care of what? Who is that? And then she sends his name. Now, when she said his name, my heart dropped to my balls. Why? Because this guy was the same guy that I was in high school with. We tried to give birthday beats as the six of us tried to give him birthday beats and he shoved us all off and basically told us, if you guys touch me, I'll destroy you. This guy is standing outside this girl's door and she hits me with the news. This is the father of her child and her, I didn't even know she had a kid, but her kid is with her mom and she was just wanting to have a nice night out and he was, is, was at that time the bouncer of this club that I went to with my fake ID when I was 16 years old. He's now a bouncer at this place and he just finished working there and now he's come over to her place to bother her because this is something apparently that happens often. I'm scared for my life. I'm thinking I'm gonna die. I've said this all the time. I'm gonna die, I'm gonna die, I'm gonna die. I really thought I'm gonna die. This guy's gonna kill me, right? So, uh, at that point, I'm thinking to myself, what's your escape plan here? How are you going to get out of here? So I remember I even told her, I was like, yo, why didn't you tell me this was your boyfriend or this was the father of your child? And you know what she says to me? She goes, why? All you guys do the same. You're all scared of him. You're all pussies. Why? And I'm just like, well, yeah, we're all scared of him. You know, I'll pick this guy. And she's like, yeah, see, that's why I don't tell anybody that's my boyfriend I'm like, or my ex-boyfriend, whatever. I'm just like, well, yeah, yeah, that's why nobody wants to 
talk to you if they know that's who your your man is or your the father of your child is but now i'm stuck here and i'm thinking to myself i'm really gonna die so i remember i like i snuck into the the, the bath the the bedroom because i'm thinking if he gets in he's probably gonna go to the couch or the living room wherever he's going so i'm like in a corner somewhere trying to hide just in case he gets in but she's living on the first floor right so while he's banging on the door it stops for a little bit and i'm thinking it's okay i'm thinking maybe it's over so he now apparently went around to the other side of the apartment building and starts knocking on the window but here's the thing when he's knocking on the window i hear two voices so cut that thought off and think about this for a second when i was in high school and i know these two guys are probably gonna watch this so boys i'm like, like i'm sorry i didn't know it was y'all but here's the thing when I was in high school and I was using my brother's ID to go out, every once in a while, I used to go hang out with this one guy and his girlfriend, right? Really cool guy. And I, we didn't hang out that much, but for whatever reason, I don't even remember why we always used to say, hey, yeah, if it was a Friday night, we're going to go out somewhere. I was underage. I had my brother's ID. They picked me up. We go there. We'd have a good time and then go home. They dropped me off and it was a really great time. This guy at that time was a boxer. He was a youth boxer. So at that point, he was the number one ranked boxer, youth boxer in Canada at that time. This is the voice. This is the second voice that I hear now outside the door. And I'm thinking to myself, holy Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints in Heiliger, wow. I'm just thinking to myself, I'm dead. These guys are going to kill me. I'm here with this guy's uh, baby's mother and you're the guy that's with him is a boxer and I'm hearing two of you guys outside and you don't know I'm in here and she's yelling and everybody's just upset with everybody and I'm just I'm just waiting for the point she opens the door they break the door down like I just told you about guys breaking doors down just to give them birthday beat or just to <laughs> initiate them and I'm thinking to myself they're gonna break this door down find me in here and I'm dead they're gonna do more than just sit on my face right I'm scared she's yelling she's yelling she's yelling she keeps telling me yeah don't worry about it. i'm gonna take care of it. i'm like no the first opportunity you have i'm out of here right so i put on all my clothes and i'm just waiting for an opportunity to run because i know i'm faster than they are i'm waiting for an opportunity to run now remember it's middle of the night in edmonton in the winter it's cold right so there was like a little pause where i heard nothing and she was convinced they're gone I'm convinced these guys are probably coming back. So I'm trying to get out of there. And she's like, she's trying to get back into the mood. I swear to you. I remember when I came, when she came to me, I was like, I took my hand out to like shake her hand and be like, hey, it was nice to know you. And as soon as I said that, just like, remember that, the other story about the girl in the bathroom, she's like, she just dejected, same thing. She's just like, oh, you, I get another one. I'm like, yo, listen, I'm not trying to get in no trouble. Listen, you know, shake hands. It's all good, but I gotta go right she's she just she's like fuck go whatever so i'm just like okay i look outside and if you guys have ever seen the movie friday you remember when he was like smoke crack and he's just running like a little crackhead through the streets that was me i open the door look outside i don't see nobody and i'm just running i'm running 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 i don't know where i'm running but i'm running and i was like where she was was like it's like halfway uphill to the to the downtown section of the city i'm running down because i know i'm running down it's faster i'm running 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 until i can just get somewhere where i can get warm because i'm cold but i don't care i'm running walking to a building that was a i was able to get into and then the building has like a, a what do you call it? a call line for a taxi so call line for a taxi and i'm thinking okay I need to get into a taxi just so it's like two o'clock three o'clock in the morning they don't ta there's no taxis or taxis running but there's no buses or no public transportation so i'm like okay let me see if i can get a taxi call for a taxi taxis tell me there's no more coming so i'm thinking to myself how am i gonna get home how am i gonna get home I'm downtown i live like a good 30 minute drive away from where i am right now how am i gonna get home so i have this crazy idea i'm like okay i'm in downtown there's a lot of shuttles that go towards the airport and where i live was towards the airport so i should you not I walk back up the hill to get to one of the main hotels, wait there for an airport shuttle, pay the airport shuttle service, sleep in the car until the car, the bus takes me as close as it can to where I live, direction airport. And then from there, that's when the taxi started running. I can go to another hotel, call a taxi, and then I went home. I almost died that night. But I'm t after that first incident, when I left her and ran home, whatever, I ended up going back to the same club where this guy worked at. For two reasons. One, I had to meet people there. Two, I had to see if he knew. So I go there and he's there, takes my ID, knows me, says, yo, what's up to me? Let's me in. I'm thinking, oh, she didn't say anything. Okay, cool, right? Go in, who do I see? Her. And I'm thinking to myself, what are you doing here? She 
mm, whatever. So, right? And I'm thinking to myself, okay, am I in trouble or not? So I start talking to her and she was upset that I left her. And I'm like, you see that man downstairs that's working down there, he could kill me. I don't want no problems with him. That's why I left. I don't want nothing to do with you in that sense, right? So because I left her like that, I always assumed that she might've been bitter about that fact. But here's the kicker though. The year after, cause I was, I was living in Europe. So after that, I never saw this girl again, right? So it was, I don't know if it was the year after or the, that following summer, but I just know it was the summertime. Cause the first time I met her was winter time. I just know it was either the next summer or the two summers after that, right? I'm with one of my boys again, just going out and in, in the city I live in, like the city is separated into basically north, south, east, west, right? So I lived in the south side of the city and the north side of the city, I had a lot of friends that live in the north side of the city. I'm gonna tell you a little bit more about the north side of the city. So I have a lot of friends that live in the north side of the city, but the north side of the city is kind of quote unquote known as like the more dangerous part of the city. You guys are like, a lot, a lot of stuff happens in the north side of the city, right? So we from the south, a friend of mine, we go to the north side of the city. There's this one uh, bar that's open on Wednesday. It was a really nice place. We always had a good good time over there. I mean, that's the last place I saw JC, rest in peace. But so is we go up there. I, it might've even been the night where I took that picture with him. But what, it doesn't matter. So I go with my boy to the north side of the city. We go there to go hang out this bar. I see some of my boys from the north side that I, don't, I never get to see when I'm home. And we're just chilling, we're having a good time. And then as per usual, a fight breaks out, right? Fight breaks out, bar fight, guys are fighting, police come, all this stuff, whatever. And then I see this one really nice looking girl. She looked like she was Spanish to me and I could speak a little bit of Spanish. So I started to speak a little Spanish with the girl. So I asked, you know, he speaks that, he speaks Spanish. She speaks Spanish. Hey, cool, okay, whatever. So we start speaking a little bit of Spanish. Turns out actually she's not Spanish, so she's Lebanese, right? Doesn't matter, it's not point of the story. So my friend went to get the car apparently while I'm talking to this girl, went to get the car and pulls up in front of the club. He's like, yo, get in. And he sees the girls like, hey, you get in too. And I'm like, okay, cool, come, let's get in. Let's go, let's go talk somewhere. So when I get in the front, she gets in the back. I look in the back sitting next to her was apparently her friend. Who was that friend? The same girl from that night. And I'm thinking to myself, wow, why? So I'm seeing her friend and I'm looking, I'm thinking to myself, oh, okay, hi. And she realizes that I must have been just talking to her friend. And I'm thinking some some hell is gonna break loose because I left her hanging at that point in time when I was when her her her, her man or her, her baby's father came and almost killed me, right? So she plays it all cool, mind you, and everything was really everything was really cool. Her the friend that I was talking to of hers and my boy, they went out to go roll up because I never smoked weed. I never, never as a as I played football from the time I was a youth uh, youth football player to a professional football player. I never did any drugs. That's important for another story that I'll tell later in in, in this series maybe, but I never did any drugs, never. And I'm saying it right now. I drank a lot, never did any drugs. So they're going on to roll a little, a little bit of weed. She comes up to me and says, hey, you know what? It's all good, it's all good. I'm thinking to myself, okay, things were settled. I ended up talking to her friend on her couch later on that night. So it was like, it was, it was funny. So anyways, uh, back going back to the north side. So this is the part where, this is the second part of the video where we're gonna call it smooth criminal, right? I always, I didn't always think I was a smooth criminal, but I, I saw people that were smooth criminals and I just somehow figured I could be one, right? I used to hang out with my boys from the north side of from the north side of Edmonton. From the north side from the north side of Edmonton. And like I said, that part of the city is where a lot of things happen that probably don't always happen everywhere else, but Edmonton in general is not a city where people have a lot. It's a very white collar or blue collar city, excuse me. So people don't have very much. People that are immigrants, they don't have very much. And you know, if you're the son or the child of an immigrant parent who doesn't have very much and you're trying to have something that's flashy, you're probably gonna find illegal ways to get it. There's a lot of guys that I know that dealt drugs. There's a lot of guys that I know that uh, dealt women. I hope to God it's still not happening, but you know, there's a lot of guys that I know that did a lot of illegal things. There was a lot of criminal activity that was hap that happened in the city. It's it was at one point uh, the number one murder city per capita. That means there was more murders per person that lived in that city in that city than anywhere else in Canada. Compared to the U.S., it's nothing. But still, when you live in that city and it's not that big of a city, it's significant because it's significant because you realize that anybody that you were hanging around might be involved in some criminal activity. And that was just the reality that I had to deal with whenever I came back home, right? But before all of that, before I even went to Europe, I was hanging out with my boys from the North side because they were just my boys, right? So I was hanging out with them and they all, they told me, yo, let's go meet at West Edmonton Mall. It was at that point, one of the biggest malls in the world. And we met there. 
So we go out there and they come up with their girlfriends. Like they had all these girlfriends that were there back when I didn't even be hanging out with girls. And they had like all these girls, these beautiful girls that hang out with them. And they all meet at the mall and they all go. And then we'd all be chilling at the mall and we'd all just be hanging out. And I swear to you, I'm thinking, hey, we're just having fun, buying French fries that I'm oblivious to everything, right? We go to a place, we try on some shoes that I knew I couldn't afford. I'm like, I don't know how you guys can afford it. They were back then maybe doing some illegal things, whatever, but everybody's just trying on some shoes, whatever. The girls are always chilling there, whatever. And then we go out. Next thing I knew, the girls are just showing all this, all this stuff that they took. And I'm like, what happened? They're like, yeah, we stole it. So while we're all just chilling, while I'm thinking everything's just, everything's kosher, these girls are just like taking clothes. They're trying on shoes. Like they'll say they want to try out a pair of shoes and then they'll end up somehow end up getting, getting the second pair of shoe and walking out with them. And they're just taking everything. And I remember at the end of the day, when we all went to the bus stops to go home, these guys are with like loads of stuff. And I'm just like, how did you guys do this? So these guys are like telling me, yeah, you got to do this, you got to do that. They're telling me how to do all this stuff. And I'm just like, wow, okay. I never did it. I was too scared to ever do anything like that when I was home because my parents would beat the shit out of me. I just knew it. So I just never did it, right? But fast forward, I'm a 16 year old boy, moved to Germany, East Germany, and I'm living there by myself with no parents around. And I'm thinking to myself, maybe I can get away with it. So here's how it started. I loved music because it was the only thing that I, I ever had that was always a friend to me. Anybody that knows me when I was growing up, I always had CDs with me. So I remember we used to take trips, for example, from, let's say from Edmonton to Calgary, back then the CD players, I remember I saved up all my money to buy a CD player or my mom bought me a CD player, whatever. I think I get, put, some, put some money in there, doesn't matter. But I used to always have CDs. So I'd buy CDs with all the money that I had, listen to them whenever we travel on road trips. So I have like a big shoe case full of CDs and just be listening to my music, listening to my music. I never talked to anybody. It's very antisocial. Didn't want to talk to nobody. I just want to listen to my music. And if I liked you, I'll let you listen to my music with you, with me, right? So that was, that was my whole routine. So I moved now to Europe. I'm in Germany living by myself. I still need to listen to my music, except I'm not getting any money other than the 200 Deutschmarks that the club was giving me as a allowance to be able to go eat a little bit of food outside of the cafeteria that we're eating at, right? So I didn't want to use this money to buy CDs because the CDs were costing 30 uh, Deutschmarks per CD. And that would have been like three CDs is already a hundred, is already a hundred, is already a hundred uh, Deutschmarks. So I was like, yeah, I don't know, like I want to have money for, for buying food and all this other stuff. So I used to, at first I was buying them. I was buying them, you know, I remember I bought the Roots CD. I bought a whole bunch of CDs that I was like, yeah, I bought them. I was happy I bought them, but I realized it's just, it's cost, I needed, I wanted more CDs than I had money for. So one thing I saw is that in, in the, in Germany, because they're so trusting the people, they had no sense of security. First, they didn't have a security patch at the back so that the alarm would ring when you walk out. And they always had the CDs inside the CDs and they never had wrapped them up, never did anything. So you could just take a CD and walk out and nobody cared. So I was thinking to myself, okay, I did the math. I'm like, okay, I think, I think this is possible. So I tried it one time, it worked. So I'm thinking to myself, okay, if it worked, then I can, I can, I, I, I rationalize it to myself to say, if I ever steal a CD, I would tell everybody that I know how good the CD was so that they would go ahead and buy it. And then all the money that I took from these artists would get given back to them through all the people that I told that I really loved the CD. And that was my rationalization. So I did this the entire time that I was, I was living in couples, right? Went back to Canada for a year, never did anything else, didn't steal anything else again. Then I went back to, to Nuremberg the second time, right? So in Nuremberg, same thing. I wasn't, I, I wasn't taking CDs anymore because I was getting paid enough money at that point in time, right? So I'm getting paid enough money. I'm buying my CDs, no problem, whatever. One time, and I'm not lying, one time that I just said to myself, hey, I'm feeling a little bit frisky. Let me have some fun. Me and my boy go, down go downtown to, or to the center of the city to go buy belts for christmas attire because we had a christmas um christmas party with fc nuremberg right so fc nuremberg first team had a christmas party we were invited as youth players and we wanted to buy some clothes that we that would fit for that party so i go and i take the belt and i realize the same thing the belt has no alarm on it just like back when i was in in, in Copus. belt has no alarm on it i'm like hmm -mm. I could just put this belt on and walk out of here is what I was saying to myself. And I remember I told my boy and I'm like, yo, just take, just put this on and walk out of here. And he's like, yeah, he's like, yeah, we could. I'm like, bro, I'm not paying for this. I'm walking out of here. Now, mind you, I had 800 euros 
in my pocket. I'll never forget this. I had 800 euros in my pocket. It was, I think it was my Christmas bonus or something, or it's money that I was supposed to use to buy a ticket to go home for Christmas. Whatever, for whatever reason, I had 800 euros in my pocket and this belt must've cost maybe 40 euros, right? I'm thinking to myself, hey, I can just walk out of here, save the 40 euros and just use it for whatever else, right? So we, before, instead of just looking suspicious, we go, we take the belts from the clothing department and we go all the way to the top to go visit our friend that worked at the electronics department because we used to always buy electronics there. So we go visit the guy, he's an African guy too, really great guy. So we go see him, go talk to him, whatever, ta da da da. Meanwhile, I have the belt on me the entire time. I'm thinking, yeah, nobody saw me take it upstairs. Nobody's gonna even remember or notice that when I decide to leave and, and leave with it, right? So after talking to him for maybe 15, 20 minutes, go back downstairs, it's time to leave. So we start leaving. As we're leaving, security guard is waiting outside. Hey, boys, come with me. I'm like, what do you want from us? And they're like, yeah, just come with me. So my boy's panicking because he's never done anything like this before. I'm thinking to myself, maybe there is a misunderstanding. Okay, we'll figure it out. Because I'm thinking, I'm still thinking to myself, how could they possibly know that I put this belt on? Because we're like, we're in the middle of like the clothing sections. I put this belt on and just as if I was trying it and then pretend I was putting it back. And I'm just thinking, there's no way these guys saw any of this, right? Lo and behold, they take us to the security room to like show us the belts. And my boy just panicked. Starts he just gave me up. It was his idea. I didn't take anything. He's one of I'm just like, bro, just come on, man. Don't do that to me. So these guys, the security guards, are just like, yeah, we we saw everything. We saw everything that you're doing. Give us, you know, give us the belts. And, and at, at that point, I panicked, but I told him, hey. I'm sorry, I just forgot. So that was my excuse. I forgot to pay for it. That's that's what I told him because that's the first thing I could think of. My boy's just like, it was his idea and I'm like, yeah, I just forgot to pay for it. I'm like, yeah, I have the money. I was like, I have 800 euros in my pockets. I'll pay for it. It's not a problem. I just forgot to pay for it. So these guys are a little bit confused because they don't know, did he really forget to pay for it or was this guy trying to steal it and now he's making up excuses saying he couldn't pay for it. So they're like, the security guards are a little bit try trying to figure out what's going on. They called the guy that we knew from the electronics section. He comes and he's like, yeah, look, I, as far as I know, they They've never given me any problems. They always buy electronics and they always do everything. You know, they, they never did it. They never, really, never did anything wrong. So if they actually did try to steal this, these are these they just they're just kids that were doing something stupid. So give them a break. I'm telling you right now, I prayed when I was in that room because I knew the consequences. If I got caught for stealing a belt at that as a youth player for MC for FC Nuremberg, I was getting sent home. <clears throat> so I knew that. I. I'm telling you, I pray and I said, God, if I get away from this situation right now without any problems, I will never steal again. And mind you, and shit you not, somehow they just said, okay, you know what? Pay for the belts and go. I didn't even pay for that. I said, you know what? Just keep the belt. Took off. Didn't go back there for a long time. But since that day, I never wanted to steal anything again. Never. So just letting you guys know. That was the end of my stealing. The start of my stealing though, is still, is still a story to be told. So I told you about how these, <laughs> these uh, uh, my boys from the north side took me to the mall and basically gave me game on how to steal anything, how to steal things, right? So here's a story between those two stories, right? I just told you the end, I told you the start, I'm gonna tell you the middle. I'm out, uh, like I said, I usually have a policy of not mentioning names, this one time I'm gonna do it just because it makes the story more interesting, but at the same time, I don't want it to feel like I'm piggybacking off, off the guy, right? So when I was in youth, I was in youth football in uh, Alberta select teams with like a provincial teams where you have a select group of players that are supposed to be the best players from the province, the region, and then you all go play against other play other teams from other regions or whatever, right? So at that time when I was 15, I think it was, I was, I was playing on the older team and on the, on the older team, our team captain was Owen Hargraves. <clears throat> so, it's me, Owen, two other guys. You're not gonna know the names anyways. I don't wanna put them in any problems. <laughs> Sorry, Owen, my bad. <laughs> so, we all we all go to um, a buffet, Chinese buffet, and we got allowances from the Alberta uh, Football Association to go out and eat, or to just have like some things to eat while we're, while we're, while we're out. So, we go out to eat, <clears throat> And uh, we, ate, we ate at this buffet, and the buffet is really expensive. Not only is it, exp is it expensive, the food is terrible. 
So we're the four of us are talking to ourselves, just saying, hey, this is terrible food, man. But you gotta pay so much money for all this stuff. And we're trying to see how much money we have from the allowance that they gave us. I'm like, yeah, we don't even have that much money. We're like, we can't even get a dessert. Like we can't even order a dessert because the dessert costs extra and it costs so much more than what it than, than what we have between us. We would have just been better off ordering a pizza, right? So for whatever reason, and I don't remember who it was. It might have even been me. I don't remember exactly who it was. Somebody just comes up with this loof suggestion. Hey, you know what? We should just walk out of here. And it, at first it was like, ah, we're laughing about it. But then I remember Owen, Owen was like, you know what? Yeah, we actually could. Like we could, we could walk out of here. We could run out of here. Nobody's gonna catch us. And then we're like, mm, we could. Now here's the funny thing about this thing, right? The reason we went to this place, because I used to go there with my mother on Sundays after church. So my mom used to have this thing where she'd take me to church and after after church, we'd all go together to go eat somewhere. And this was one of the places that we went to or it's in that area, right? I'm thinking, and that's why we went there. So I'm like, yeah, should we do this? But yeah, why not? They don't know who I am. We'll just go ahead and do it. <clears throat> so here's how we planned it, right? We set all four of us, cause there's a dining area. So we just, we first of all, we just ordered everything we could. We just ordered like the dessert, extra Cokes, everything. We just ordered like, let's just eat whatever we want. We're walking out of here anyways, right? So we ordered everything, we run up the bill and the, the deal was, or the, the, the plan was, three of us are gonna walk out first and one is gonna is gonna take all the money because we gotta show that we have the money. It's gonna take all the money and put it on the money tray. And normally you leave it at the table. It's gonna take the money as if they're going to the front of the where the cashier was. The cashier was at the in front of the front door, as if you're gonna pay. And then you just pocket the money and walk out as if nobody nobody pays attention, right? So three of us walk out first. And I remember I had on sandals like flip flops, right? So. All three of us walk out. Oh, and Owen, he's the leader. He's our, not the leader. He's just the guy that's like, okay, I'll take responsibility. I'll take charge. So he goes, okay, fine. You guys go out first and then I'll, I'll come after you and then we'll, we'll all run out. I remember we, we hashed this plan out actually all together in the bathroom too. So all four of us go to the toilet and we hashed this plan out and that's what we, we decided to do. So three of us walk out first. Owen is, Owen is behind us and we're assuming, okay, he's just going to casually walk up behind us and then we'll just try and disappear somewhere. As we're walking, there's two doors. You walk out the front, the, the inside door and then the front door. As I walk out the front door, maybe take five steps out. You just hear Owen go, run! So we all just took off. I'm running with my sandals. You see this one guy with like these Chinese, these Japanese like machete knives or whatever. Yay, hey, come back here and pay. And we're just bolting, right? I've got flip flops on, bro. So I'm running, running, running. My foot flips out, uh, slips out of the flip flop, twisted my ankle. And I'm like, I can't stop now. So I'm running on a hopped up foot. I'm running, running. We're all running. We're all running. This guy couldn't catch us. And we're just running, 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 running. Until we find like a building far, far away. We walk in that, we, we run in that building find a big toilet uh big toilet room just hide in there and we're like okay everybody's like what are we gonna do what are we gonna do now so we call one of the one of my other guys friends we're like okay we're gonna <laughs> we're, he's gonna come pick us up and uh, his brother no we call it not his friend we call his brother call his brother neil uh, okay i don't want to say his name neil and nick neil nick anyways so we're <laughs> we're, in, we're in the bathroom and we're like okay we're gonna call your brother your brother's gonna come pick us up and then we're gonna go home right so call his brother his brother came to pick us up and then we all go home and it was just like mad. It was just like this huge adrenaline, so ad, adrenaline, adrenaline rush that we had. But at the same time, I was shitting bricks. Cause like I said, my mom used to take me to this place. So I wasn't sure if she was going to take me again or not. I lo and behold, I think it was maybe a few months later. My mom says, okay, we went to church. So afterwards she goes, okay, let's go to this place. And we'll have uh, we'll have a buffet. And I'm thinking to myself, can't we go anywhere else? But I can't tell her not to go there. I can't, cause she'll be asking me why. I have no reason why. Cause I apparently never went, never go to this place without her. So we went there and I was shitting bricks thinking that they, they might remember who I am, but nope, they had no idea who I was. Went there, had a great little buffet with my mom and then went home and everything was cool. So, uh, more of the story is if you're doing illegal stuff, stealing, whatever, it might be fun for the for the duration of it. Like the stories might be cool and everything, but there's always gonna come an end where you get caught. And when you get to that point, you're gonna have to decide whether your entire life was worth risking it for that, or if it was just something you should leave alone in general. My life has been great ever since I stopped stealing. Uh, it's funny stories to tell, but just, like I said, the name of it is Smooth Criminal. I was not a smooth criminal. I don't like to do criminal activities anymore, unless it's like drinking, whatever. But for the just the basis of it is don't be a bad boy don't be don't be a criminal don't be a criminal it's not good it's not good it's not good all right anyways that was it that was uh episode five i think of uh 
coffee shop talk. Uh, I'm hoping I don't have to do too many more of these because the whole point of doing all of these is waiting for the video for Chili's Cafeneo to come out because I just wanted like a lead up to the video because all of these stories, like I say, like I like I've always said, are just for a, a face group group uh, Chili Cafeneo that were really really opening to me when I when I first presented myself as a musician where I first put the video out it's like a Ike group it's a really big network of Ike fans and actually football fans in general that are just like really cool minded people they're not fanatic they have fun make fun of everything like we make fun of Ike when Ike loses we make fun of other teams when they lose and just it's just a whole bunch of fun and I basically tell these stories just for them to have some enjoyment anybody else that happens to be coming out and hearing these stories is for, enjoy is for your enjoyment as well like I said it's not for kids but at the end of the day I'm doing all this so that it's leading up to when the video comes out because I want them to enjoy the entire process from now until the video comes out so that everything is just it's, it's all fun and games for all of them all right so again thank you for watching another ep another episode of uh coffee shop talk and i'll see you again hopefully next week i might take a break we'll see but i hope you've checked out the video that i just put out for skrilla the skrilla remix the remix is awesome i love it i hope you all love it as well i hope that the clubs open up soon enough so that people can play it in there everybody listens to it like i said follow me on uh instagram was i uh official follow me on uh youtube was i official as you're saying here also uh just follow me hit me up send me a message or write a comment underneath all of this so i can just see what you guys think and other than that like i said have a great weekend or have a great week you've probably seen this on monday it's friday night over here have a great week and we'll see you guys when i see you all right really appreciate you guys taking the time i'm out Chili, 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 Gaffineo, Gaffineo.